All right, it is Sunday, May 23rd, 10.57 in the morning, and here we have an ollie that wants to bite you. How do you feel? The bird wants to bite you right now. But anyway, Andrew, what are we doing today? We're taking a little drive. Just a little drive. Very short, very uh, very simple. Uh, you know, just, just across the U.S., nothing, nothing too bad. But yes, we are going out to California today. We will be out there for a couple days. We'll be going out through like the mountains, back through on the desert. It's gonna be a pretty awesome trip. So we're gonna head out here now. The first stop, Denver, Colorado. So we just got to our first stop of the trip, and that is one of our classic favorites. It's a diner. The Courtesy Diner here in St. Louis. So I guess our trip will actually start from here today. So we gotta get some food, and then we're gonna get on the road. It's pretty much just gonna be Interstate 70 all day today. All right, it's 11.53. We just reset the, uh, the count to zero miles. We just had our breakfast slash burger. We got the GPS queued up for Denver. What is the mileage to Denver? 849, 12 hours. 12 hours. So this tr this particular day is going to be full of cornfields and flat driving. and driving. We're going to stay night in Denver. We'll do a couple elevators tomorrow morning and then head out tomorrow morning, continuing our way west. So we're just sitting here at 64. We haven't gone too far, but over there, you can see they're actually knocking down Queenie Tower. That was, the, that was the building with those really fast Otis elevators and that old freight. So they've taken the, the little bridge across that went to the other building. They've taken that off and they're just taking this thing down floor by floor. I'm just waiting for this light to get on 64 and we're going to make our way up to 70. It's uh, 12 16. We haven't gone very far, but we've got fire up here. A car on fire on the side of the highway. Yeah. Let's hope it doesn't pull like a GTA and explode on us. Oh yeah, there is a car on fire. It came from the engine. The engine's on fire. It's gonna burn up the whole car. What kind is it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that whole car is on fire. That's not good. But beyond, behind that is the dead Chesterfield Mall. And uh, we first thought the mall was on fire. <laughs> oh, the mall's burning down. We're out here in Chesterfield. We haven't gone too far. We're picking up 70 up here in a few miles. Do they even have a fire department out here? Yeah. Probably just start happening. Those are some new, new apartment buildings going up. There it is, right there. Oh yeah, that's part of the fire department. Responding to the call, finally. That probably just happened. Andrew, what is that up ahead? That's the golf place. Well, what happens there? Fan old man. So we're just coming out of Chesterfield. I always like seeing this bridge. There's only one of the original ones left here. So Andrew's got a giant splotch there, so hopefully that doesn't get in the way too much. We can clean the window. And over there's a view of the Missouri River. entering St. Charles County now. And that was right across the bridge. What'd you think of the bridge? That bridge is cool. How old is that bridge? Uh, I'm not sure the exact year it was built, but again, that was the original. That was the original bridge, and then when they made, you know, they brought this, they built this up, they, uh, they added the, uh, the other lane, the other bridge as well. So it's 12.30 and we're about ready to get onto the one road pretty much that we're taking all the way to Denver, and that is Interstate 70. This is the very end of 64. So I, you, we, we both have been to both ends of 64. Yep. This is the end up here. It turns into 61 if you continue straight, or you hop onto 70. So we will be passing through Kansas City. Last time we went out this way was in our 2018 trip to Kansas. See there, it turns into 61. 
So it looks like it continues on to the interstate, but it doesn't. Continue on I-70 West for 202 miles. Continue straight for two hours and 41 minutes to exit 885 I-435 South, Wichita. So we're on 70. We have 207 miles to Kansas City. There's not really a whole lot to see out here. This is a rather boring drive. This is like one of the last, so we're still in the St. Louis metro area. Yeah, the really, really outskirts of it. Yeah, 70 is not the most fun drive, so probably a travel montage for Norfolk this. Norfolk and Western. Yep, there's the MW. All right, it's about 12.44, and Andrew's, got, pee stop. Andrew's got a pee. <laughs> pee stop at the rest area. Break check. Well, how was the bathroom? Just average. Is you're you're the bathroom guy here. Nothing special. Okay. We're getting back on to 70, and again, it's, it's been the same road all the way out there. So travel montage. <laughs> Grove 70, look at that. Oh, that They're is cool. They're trying to make it the, the Iowa 80s just north of here. Well, it's not, I wouldn't say just north of here, but it is a little ways. We're gonna make a quick- Let me, I'm gonna go to the TA, it's got a shell. Do this here. 262 though for gas. Uh, it's only a few cents. It's 258 over there, it's only a few cents. This is a confusing intersection. Yeah, we're just outside of Kansas City, probably, what do we have, like, probably 30 miles or less yeah. than that to get to Kansas City. Uh, Going through there and then into Kansas. I've probably stopped at this TA before. like Kansas. You'll see here we have a lot of trees still, but up there there's none. We'll get more flat as we go further west. So how's the trip been so far, would you say? Been good. We're making good time. Making good time. We took some uh, back roads, US 40 a little bit. We're going to be doing that again. Uh, more oh, towards... Wow, these people actually get out of my way and they don't use their turn signal. <laughs> We'll be taking a couple. Uh, we'll be taking US 40 again when it splits off here in like four hours or so. Oh, there's a rest area. I'm gonna stop there to pee. That sounds like a good idea. Look at how it fills the truck spaces. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, and you can see now we are in very flat, no trees at all, pretty much. <laughs> it's kind of hilly off in the distance, though. Here we are in the Flint Hills again. If you might remember from our 2018 trip to Kansas, we were in the southern, more southern part of the Flint Hills, and we're here in the, the northern part of the Flint Hills. So hopefully it'll be nice and hilly and hopefully flinty. So we're getting off here at 
with this rest area. This was one of those ones that's in the middle of the road. Yeah, really speed hard. Hang on. I saw a railroad down there. Car to the left. Looks like there'll be a view up here. Oh, we can go through that. Observation deck. We'll go check it out. It's our back on the road, and we have 512 miles left till we get to Denver. Again, we'll be making a branch off on US 40, take a little back roads. Maybe see some sights while we're out there in the middle of nowhere in the dark, but you know. We'll still have some daylight. Yeah, we'll have a little bit. It won't be completely dark yet. chill and see what uh, Kansas has to offer. Okay, once the uh, time comes through here, doesn't say the time. Oh, wait, okay, there we go. So subtract an hour. We are here in, I'm not actually sure where we are in Kansas. We just pull off for gas. We are in Bunker Hill, Kansas. And we just pulled off for a quick gas and snack shop. Getting back onto 70. Miles. There is this neat looking storm. I mean, it, it's already kind of passed through, but it was a lot darker looking when we first got there. But straight ahead, again, it's just all flat. And how many miles until our hotel? Uh, 369, five hours. So 369 and then plus the uh, the little extra drive we're gonna do on US 40. So we're actually going to take US 40 a little ways. There are some severe storms north of here. Scary. Those are them there. There's going to be some rain for sure. But we're going to do a couple, some back roads. Yeah, and there is the TA. Something stinks. It's not me. <laughs> I would have claimed that if my that, fart smelled that bad. That I doesn't smell like that. fart. That smells like just, like, pure dump. <laughs> I would have claimed that if my fart smelled that bad. <laughs> That's really bad. <laughs> So anyway, we're gonna turn left here and take US 40 off to Denver. All right, it is 8.45 Central Time. I say that because we'll be switching time zones fairly soon. And... I'm pulling over to Pete on the side of the road. Yeah, so this is the middle of Kansas, and you can see here it is very flat. Oh, there's a pull-off here with a, a marker. I can just, yeah, I can pee here. Okay, Oops. and we, we got a railroad here as well. And we got a lot of wind. So we'll get out and we'll take a little panoramic view. Of me peeing. Well, no, we don't really want that, but of Kansas. You can hear how windy it is out here. All right, well, time to get back on the road. So after that stop, I almost got blown over like four times. You can see why it's so dangerous driving in this. Yeah, we're gonna continue on. I love looking at the railroad too, like it just winds along 40 here. Yeah, there's not like a tree in sight. It is completely flat. We're gonna get blown around. Oh, there's some trees over there. There's, there's some. It's getting dark, so we're gonna try to get it to the uh, get to the uh, Colorado sign before it gets too dark. Get some of the clouds. Yeah, get some pictures. <coughs> and wow, there's a car. A rare sight on this road. All right, we are now in Mountain Time. It is 9:19 Mountain Time. We have 8 gone. 19. Is it eight? 
It says nine on mine. Your phone hasn't updated yet. Mine I guess. Has. Okay, so eight nineteen, Mountain Time, and we're still in Kansas. We are. It's getting dark, as you can see, but we are getting. We're probably about twenty minutes or so from the state line. I we see can, rain up ahead. Yeah, we we may not be getting a particularly good picture of it, but we'll see. There's a lot of lightning going on, but it's also pretty far out there too. The lightning. This has been a pretty flat and boring drive through Kansas. I'm probably gonna just just save the clips for the rest of tonight for anything that's kind of interesting. Because there's not really much to see when it's there's literally nothing to see. Except that there's an Andrew there. That's kind of scary, but you know. There's still a little bit of sun left in the sky over there. You can see the, the sky, the uh, the red in there. Not a lot of lightning bolts. It's mainly just kind of up in the clouds. This looks pretty cool. But we are coming into some small town in a few miles up here. You can probably see it way off there in the distance. All those lights straight ahead, pretty far off there. But that actually is a severe thunderstorm we're driving right into pretty much. So we're definitely gonna be keeping a uh, heavy watch on the weather. Let me get this uh, focus here so we don't have a complete blur. You'll see lots of lightning pretty much all around us. Again, hopefully we don't get completely rained out at the state line sign. All right, if you looked out there, there's the storm. Look at all those red lights over there. I don't know if you can see them. They're all like in sync. The antennas? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, did you see that lightning strike down there? Yeah, there was some. Yeah, we got a bunch of antennas over there. But there's the storm. Yeah, look at them straight ahead. That's interesting. So the worst of the storm is kind of to the north, which is right there. You can obviously tell it's very heavy rains and lots of lightning. We're gonna go through just a little tiny patch down here to the south. This is the current thing in Goodland, which is north of us. Um, you can see the patch that it's in right now. We're kind of to the south, so we're gonna hit this little tiny red strip, which is uh, what's right in front of us here. Whoa, did you see that bird? <laughs> See the end of the storm out there. See the, the clouds. How it's uh, there's the sun straight ahead. So there is there is some light at the end of the tunnel. And right up here is our state line into Colorado. With <laughs> the storm literally surrounding us. Yeah, the way so, yeah. That blue sign say? Leaving Kansas. Here's the sign I'll pull over. There it is. Come again. And just pull off right here. So we have headlights on it. Welcome to one colorful Colorado. Yep. So this will be a cool picture. All right, we just got our shot down there at the state sign. We're driving into some bad storms. Here comes the rain. Cue up the song, Here Comes the Rain. Hopefully there's no hail. Yeah. And uh, this is the picture I got. So this is one of the pictures I got, which I will be editing that later. But here's the rain. And with that being said, there's really not gonna be a whole lot more we can see, because it's just completely rainy and dark and lightning. It's kind of cool. It's kind of creepy, but kind of kind of cool. So, uh, what was it? 100 and how many miles to our hotel? 190. 190 miles to the hotel. It's over a couple hours. Two hours and 57 minutes. Yeah, so yeah, a little under three, little under three hours left to our hotel. Hopefully, we'll be getting out of this storm sooner rather than later. I see the other end there, and just checking the weather. It looks it's like going northwest. We're gonna be following. It's raining so hard, it's raining sideways. Oh, the wind is blowing, that's why. Yeah, it would slow down. Like, yeah, look at the rain, it's going 
sideways. The air conditioner compression needs to be on to the top of the window. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, we're right in between the two red patches here. So over there, if you look to the left, it's just completely lightning. To the right, it's still lightning, but more to the left there. And then we're that's south of us. Yes, that's south. These so we're, storms have intensified. Yeah, so we're we're pushing our way out of these storms here. You can see it's pretty much clear sky straight ahead. This is where we're in a very dangerous part of the storm. This is yeah. This is the dangerous part. This is where the tornadoes can be. So. Why we have some daylight to where we can see one? Yeah. There's a lot of towers over there. Look at all those lights. They're all in sync too, which I think is kind of cool. Ooh, there's a good bolt. Okay, it is 10:20. We have gone how many miles? 775. We've gone 775.8 miles. We only have 98, 90 miles to go. We are about ready to get on back on to 70. We just uh, on this little side drive on US 40. We're coming back into civilization again. I think we're going to make a quick food stop up here in this town. I'm going to do something right off the interstate. Yeah, there's a McDonald's right off the interstate, so I'm sure you'll be happy with that. So we'll get this, and then we'll go to our hotel. We've got a Clarion in Denver. There's more of those uh, very satisfying-looking in-sync lights over there. Okay, so we're getting off at exit 359 on Interstate 70. I see a restaurant over there that a certain somebody... I know it really likes. And that's where we're actually gonna get off and well that's where we're gonna eat. Where's the ramp? Oh here it is. These exit ramps you can tell get destroyed in the winter. If you think it's snow here, we're at a high elevation here. And we got a flying J with an IHOP down there. We'll go to the Sinclair gas station first. You got a TA. You can actually still see the lightning from the storm we went what through. Ew, gas is expensive. It's over three dollars. It's only gonna get worse as we go west. Are you serious? Yeah, it gets higher. 317? Ew. I guess 305 is the cheapest. Alright, well, after getting gas... I knew it wouldn't be too long before we ended up at McDonald's. Whenever you're with this guy, McDonald's mm -hmm. is pretty much an essential stop. It is. So what did we get? Uh, French fries, hamburgers, and chicken nuggets. Yep, so junk food. Mm -hmm. And you're already mowing the fries. You're supposed to eat the burger first before you mow the fries. Here, can you I get one of my burgers out? Well, one of them? I got two double hamburgers. Oh, my. Well, anyway, we're going to eat this and get back on the road. It is 11.32. We have gone 843 miles in the trip, and we're coming into the Denver area. We've got about 20, what is that, 20, is that 29 miles to our hotel. Yes. So we are getting very close, and it'd be nice to get out of the car and go to bed. So all those lights out there, that's the airport. Now you can see it. It's very blurry, but you can see there's about four planes on a... One just came down. Looks like there's another one right there landing. Got two more on approach. It, and the runways are just excessively far away from the terminal, too. It's, it's crazy how far out Denver Airport is. But yeah, there it is over there. And there we have an oil refinery with a flamethrower on top. Coming into the Denver area. Yep, that looks really cool. That right there is like live footage of like Taco Bell after you eat it. <laughs> and if you look off in the distance, you can see all kinds of lights. That's Denver. Yep. And beyond that are the Rocky Mountains. Which we're not gonna be able to see until tomorrow. It's daylight, we'll probably be able to start to see the mountains behind the city. Yep. I'm not sure where downtown is relative to us. I think it's pretty much straight ahead. But 
but almost there. All right, it is 9.53 of the next day after checking into our hotel. This is what our hotel is, this is the Clarion. We've got this interesting shape, but this is our hotel room. Very nice, thanks Jacob. Jake, Jacob found this hotel for, for what us. It is, it's nice. it's if we look out the window here, we have a great view of the Rocky Mountains with the snow on top. And as two people that have planned for summer weather, I think going up there is gonna be a bit chilly. And over there is downtown Denver. So we're gonna do a couple of elevators in Denver, and then we're gonna get on the road because we wanna get up in the mountains and get some pictures and head on over to Salt Lake City. Well, we will be spending an entire day there tomorrow elevator doing some elevator hunting. But anyway, Andrew's all packed up. I'm all packed up. Let's head out. Let's go. All right, we have an old, old Otis elevator here to ride. Look at this. Press it. There we go. It is 1219 and we're about eight miles, we're about, yeah, we're not too far out of Denver. We just made a food stop at McDonald's. So this McDonald's, Andrew kind of foamed over because it looks like that, but it looks like they're gonna renovate it. How would you feel if they put the modern McDonald's That's in? That's exactly what's gonna happen. They're gonna ruin this cool McDonald's. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the cool thing is like, looks like a Mountain Lodge restaurant. This look, I mean, it does. We're in the mountains. And they're gonna put a cookie cutter McDonald's thing. Instead of the Mountain Lodge looking. Well, anyway, we're gonna eat French fries. Mm -hmm. And mode the fries. Mm.
what's our mileage for the trip? I'm going back east. I haven't. 975. Uh, 975. So we're coming down this hill here. So we're actually going to do a quick little science experiment. That's right, science on an elevator YouTube channel. We're going to see what happens because uh, obviously with the elevation change, we're going to seal this bottle off when we get to the bottom of the hill, and when we go up to Birth and Pass, we're going to see how much it shrinks. It may not shrink at all. I have no idea. So we're going to do a little bit of science uh, on this uh, Look at the scenic view. on this channel. But as you saw there, we had some very scenic views. We were up in the snow, which was really cool. It was very chilly up there. It was like 40, what was it, the 40s up there? Yeah, it was like 39. It was the 30s? Yeah, it was upper 30s. Uh, we're just coming back down here. And this is really cool. This is my first time actually up in these mountains. So this is definitely cool to see. Right, we just got off onto US 40. Up there is the uh, snow mountains we were just in. I've sealed our water bottle, so we'll see what happens to that. And we have 16 or yeah, 16 miles up this road to get up to Bertha Pass. This little mountain town. Yep, coming into some small. I don't know if it's really a town. Yeah, a little town. Really a whole lot to see, but got some snow-capped mountains over there. This is the highest point in the, on the on the Rockies we're going over. You know this part right here. Yeah, I saw what looked like another avalanche potential up up ahead. More. We was talking about these two passes. I mean, with the, the, the I-70, 40, and six go over. This is the highest point. Yeah. Are we doing one of those real sharp turns here in a second? Five miles from the top. Look at that avalanche up there, like that could happen. Oh, and like the good shot. But yeah, totally an avalanche could totally happen up there. Hopefully it doesn't happen while we're underneath it because that wouldn't be particularly fun. Yeah, we're really getting up here. Look how sharp these turns are. Look there, you can see how the road just keeps going up, up, up. Yeah, and as for the, as for the update of our water bottle, um, it's very, it's getting very stiff. Um, so obviously as we get to the top, this thing will get more and more stiff. And then once we get to the top, we'll depressurize it and we'll watch it implode as we go back down. Look at all that stuff up on the top there. Here's how the road continues. What is that up there? It's interesting, it's just towers and stuff. Right, we are now arriving here at Berthet Pass. Where's the sign? Right there. I mean, there's another sign. Oh, well, let's see here. Hold on. This is the trailhead. Where's the sign for the Bertha Pass? So I parked it. Uh, there's another point. Wait, I thought I parked. Wait, hold on. Where's the Bertha Pass sign? Right there. Oh, they, no, that's not it. There is a different sign up here. They might have replaced it, but look at this view. Yeah, this is where it is. The elevation here is 11,300. Oh, so this is 11,000. This might be higher. 11,307. So as the status of our water bottle, this thing is really stiff so listen so now we're going to seal it so that when we go down it will implode so it is currently now 8 47 and you'll notice it's a lot darker than the last clip that's because we had a little diversion but we are now currently on our way up to salt lake city and there goes someone going really fast it might be a cop we're going to be getting there at five in the morning <laughs> Maybe a little know. earlier if I drive. Uh, we are currently 1,208 miles into the trip. And we're taking Interstate 25 up to 80. So it's getting dark. Probably not going to be a whole lot to see. Well, maybe take a look at Denver if we go through downtown. Yep. We had a great time, though. Yep. But that is downtown Denver over there. We'll get a better view here in a second. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's Denver. The phones are reflecting. It's not, it's not a very colorful city. Like, I know some cities have a lot of like, lights and stuff. That one's just kind of, oh, it just looks more like a typical city. Yeah. Kind of a neat outline of the mountains, too, in the distance. Yep, it looks like the Gateway Arch almost. It's hard to see, but you can see a silhouette of it. I know, that's, that's kind of funny. Uh, excuse me. Nice. It is 1014 and we just got off 24 on to... Continue on East Co Road 70 for six miles. I don't know what she said. I heard Co Road, but that's it. East County Road... Uh, 76 or 70. Okay, I have no idea what this is. 
road alternate route advised. Wait, is CR 72? Is it telling us to go on 72 or just 70? 70. Okay, and we also have a railroad up ahead. Here's the railroad. What railroad is it? Is it is it BNSF or UP? It's BNSF. So it's about 1026, 1025 ish, and we, the pavement. Ended. Yeah, we're just driving along, and the pavement just said bye. And here we are on a dirt road, just cruising along in the middle of the night <laughs> on a dirt road. We have about 1.7 miles until we get to 287, which is more of a real road. But yeah, this is what a dirt road in the middle of Colorado looks like. Hopefully there's not just gonna be like a moose in the middle of the road. Okay, it is 12.22 a.m. We've still got about five hours. We got about- oh, less than that, a lot less. Four and a half. Four and a half, maybe. We got about four and a half hours left to our hotel. And off there on the right, we have what looks to be- We've seen that for the past 50 miles. I know, we've been seeing that forever. It's one of those uh, things that look like a city but it's just an oil refinery. A lot of jobs over there. Probably. It kind of looks like they're burning. It looks like fire. Go to the truck stop here and get gas. Yeah, they've got those big flames where they're just burning stuff. So that's kind of cool. Lights of a truck stop. So we're pulling off here at Sinclair Travel Plaza. Last of the, oh, we gotta go in the truck stop. They have a diner. That's kind of cool. Treat you like family, probably. Yeah, like family. Yeah, so this is like a little little local truck stop. These are the best kind of truck stops. Well, you would know. I think I've 345 for gas. I'm glad we don't have to fill up very much. Yeah, that's... Woof. But yeah, we'll go in this little truck stop and get back on the road. <laughs> Not a whole lot to see out here. It's overall been flat. It's been kind of hilly in the distance, but nothing like we saw earlier. It's probably so expensive because it's one of the only gas stations around here. Stinker. That's Andrew. And they have to deliver the gas out here. So we just stopped for a quick gas and pee break, and now it's pretty much non-stop all the way to Salt Lake. Over there is the refinery. You see the big old flames coming out of the top there. You know there's some elevators over there. Oh yeah. And I see a train over there. Let's see if you guys can see Auto it. Rex. Yeah, we got a train there. The rate of speed we're going, well, we're, he's moving pretty quick, but we might see the front of it if we follow this, if this follows the tracks. 1,442. Yep. And we have four hours and 36 minutes to get to Salt Lake, so that'll put us there right around 5 a.m. So this will be the latest uh, driving. We we push, we keep pushing the record. I mean, at this point, there's there's gonna become a day when we just straight up drive all night and get there in like 10 in the morning. Yep, he's got three engines. There's the front of the train. We're going for, yeah, he's, going, he's probably going about 60. It's about 2.09 and we're going through some random tunnel. It's not very long. It's kind of a cool looking one though. Oh yeah. Here, uh, Green River or whatever. Wyoming. Yeah, we're in Wyoming. We got these kind of cool looking rock formations. That's what I seem to do over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at those rocks up there. Yeah, that's pretty much what the scenery is like before we run it. It would be cool to be able to see this during the day because this is very uh, interesting. We're 170 miles from the hotel. So it is currently 3.13 a.m. and we are one mile from the Utah State Line. I will be attempting to take a photo of the, of the state sign. I think I see it. Yeah, there it is. I don't know if it'll be a good place to pull over. Uh, we might just get a good shot with the handy cam. There is the Utah sign. Fortunately, and that has just ruined it. That has ruined it. There we go. So 
there's no nope. parking anytime. Well, there's the Utah side. So no picture. I'll just pull a video still, that'll work. And we have an hour and 18 minutes left, probably closer. How many miles does it say? Another 80 uh, 82 miles. 82 miles to the hotel. Okay, it is currently 4.08, and we have gone 1,729 miles. We can't really see a whole lot, but we're winding our way down through these mountains, and we're almost at Salt Lake. Also, uh, I totally forgot to like update you on this earlier, but it's th this is our scientific water bottle from earlier, and you can see here it has imploded on itself. Um, so I thought, I'd, thought I'd mention that. It's kind of, I guess, a little bit late for that, but, you know, science. Yeah. We're actually still going down, so theoretically... There's town. Oh, yeah. There's Salt Lake City up there in the front of us. There it is. Well, kind of. We'll see more of it. It's more that way. Yeah, there's, there's still a chance it could actually implode some more, considering we're going down more. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that was a pretty... Uh, useless but interesting science experiment. This is a nice sight after driving almost all night. Yeah, we've literally been driving all night. It 15 is 15 miles away, there's... And there we have Salt Lake. We're 15 miles from it. There's the city. Well, that's not downtown. That's the, this, the area there. Oh, no, I see it over there. There's downtown. Off in the distance. Behind all the trees. But yeah, if you look behind us, I don't know how much you can actually see, but there are the mountains over there. I mean, you know, tomorrow we'll definitely see them a lot better. Over there we have downtown. There's that, oh, bump. There's a great elevator. There's a train down there. I wonder if that's tracks. But over there we have downtown Salt Lake. There's the Capitol building up there. Interesting. Getting on to 80 again. We are very close to our hotel. Staying our... on 80. Oh yeah, staying on 80. Our hotel is right next to 3-4 left runway. So I'm, I have really got my fingers crossed that tomorrow the, the wind is from the north. You can spot from literally our hotel. That would be super cool. There's a view of Salt Lake City and the Capitol up on the hill, which looks pretty cool. That actually would be a neat photo to get of the Capitol building. Five miles out. Yeah, we're really close now. Yeah, and it is currently 4.17 a.m. And uh, we're both very tired. <laughs> There I see airports. There's three, four right. Runway right there. Here we go. And on our side is three, four left. Hopefully I can spot some planes here. That would be pretty cool. If I don't, I don't. If I do, I do. 1,742.7 miles. You can see the hotel over there. And there is three, four left right there. So I definitely think we've got a potentially great spotting. If only I could just like stand right here, that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, our hotel is like, right, right by there, some, the Mike Hotel. Yeah, the Mike Hotel, and then there's the Hyatt place. So my thought was walk over to the Hyatt place parking. I've got like a beautiful shot of the airport, potentially touchdown shots too, if, if that's that. So we'll see, but yeah, that's our hotel right there, literally right smack next to the airport. So that's gonna we be pretty epic, so. Well, we are here, that is going to be it for tonight. And tomorrow we're gonna be off to explore the city and see some elevators and just have a good time. Bye. All right, it is the next morning and we've got, looks like an e-jet going over right there. We are gonna head out and do some elevators, explore the city and see what we can find. It'll be a good day. Yep. All right, well we are here in Salt Lake City now. We're in the parking garage. And we're gonna start our little elevator adventure here. Starting off with uh, 
parking garage elevators now. We're gonna go see what kind of office buildings we can get into. And then we'll do some parking garages and I'm sure we'll get some. We'll get some stuff. Take a picture in daylight too. Okay. These were some Otis touches. These are some Otis touches for just this thing. Yeah. And me. Well, these were all Kimballs, I think. The freight elevator. Lantern. That is an epic motor. US. US. Press it. U.S. elevators. Uh, northern. That's a northern. Huh. Listen to this.
Another the City Creek Center, and we have another Kone. It's right there. Okay, it is now 6.06 and we are going back to the hotel for a little bit because I see planes arriving. So we'll do some plane spotting. So we had a great day down here in Salt Lake. What did you think of the finds we got? Look at this like really cool I ramp mean, to get out. We got, I mean, nothing terribly interesting, but there is some cool stuff and we got enough for about another month's worth of content. Got a lot of modern stuff, a lot of just kind of generic things, but we are currently uh, paying for the parking and we'll be on back to the hotel. All right, it's about 10.28. There goes the UTA tracks, the blue line. There it goes. And we have just finished chilling out downtown throughout the day. Saw some really cool stuff today in downtown. We went to this shopping mall here, the Gateway. Went to the uh, the mall downtown, and we went to this shopping center that had some really cool elevators as well. So I guess at this point tonight, we're pretty much just gonna chill out for the rest of the night. Be yep, be done. We're gonna go to bed and get up tomorrow and head towards Sacramento. The car is just right up there. So look at this old button too. I like that. And we got, oh, we got a indicator controls crossing there. So, kind of need some, there's some neat signals down here. But anyway, the car is about a block, not even a block away. We're gonna get up there and go to bed. It is now 11.06 on uh, Wednesday, May 26th. And we are checking out of our hotel <coughs> here in Salt Lake and we're gonna head down to Sacramento now. But we're first gonna go get some food and maybe see an elevator before we head out. And then we'll be on the road. All right, we are currently at a Wendy's. We just stopped for gas and Wendy's on our way out of town. We also saw an elevator that was over there. Got a chicken sandwich here. We've got, I think, about a nine hour drive. So we'll see a lot of neat scenery. We'll see the salt flats, see some more mountains, think a little bit of desert. It'll be pretty cool, actually. We are here at the salt flats now. Look at all the salt. I'm gonna step out on it. Yeah, this is like pure salt right here. It's really like hard, yeah. It's like, you could drive on this. We're gonna just drive out there. We're gonna drive out onto the salt. Here we go, we're driving out onto the salt. Oh, look at that pothole. <laughs> here we go. Let's see here. I've seen other. Yeah, right here. Here, here we, we go. go. We're driving out onto. We're it. driving out on the salt. Except you probably, you definitely want to get a car wash. Are you just gonna floor it? I'm not gonna go over 20. We're gonna just drive out here a couple miles. Just don't lose sight of the interstate. Yeah. Because we will get lost out here. We're just gonna drive out here a couple miles. You're literally driving on salt right now. That is really cool. What do y'all think of this? <laughs> We're driving on salt. A little salty. All right, we are out here in the salt flats. Way back there is the interstate. And I'm just gonna say that salt sticks to your shoes and the car, so we're gonna have to get a car wash. Ugh. Yeah, this is where the raceway is over here. This is really cool. It's really quiet. You can't even hear the interstate. 
Okay, so this is what the salt looks I like. The salt, so we don't have to pee at the rest area. So this is what it looks like. Like it's it's hard ground, but it's like really sticky on top. I'm gonna start driving. I'm okay. Hot. All right. I see the rest area over there. Let's see that it's 117 miles is what I have. Remember 117, okay? 117. All right. Look here. This is like a road here. Look. I know. I just wonder how many miles out we went. Well, we'll see. So, what'd you think of us driving out on the salt? That was awesome. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Like, that's really cool. So, we're actually gonna go to a car wash here to get the, the salt off the car, which is probably a good idea. And there's uh, one up here past the Nevada state line. All right, we are now in Nevada. Uh, what is our mileage for the trip so far? Go to trip A. Uh, 1,938 miles and the car wash? go to the left. We're getting off here because we just dropped at the salt flats and well, we really don't want the salt to destroy the car. So we're gonna get a car wash and well, hopefully desalt the car. So we're here at this Grease Monkey car wash. Hopefully it works. Yeah, hopefully it has the undercarriage. If it does, go real slow through it. car in there. Yep. So yeah, what's nice, since you purchased the big wash there, they're gonna get all of our salt off for us. Alright, here we go in. We're gonna slow. Oh, yeah. Alright, here's the car wash, guys. Oh. Oh. There we go. All right, the wash is done. And there we go. Let's see how good it did. It's also some, I still see a few of the bugs on this. Yeah, can you do me a favor and push my mirror back out? Oh, yep. Yeah.
48. And we just made a quick stop in Elko to see a couple elevators. We saw an epic old black button in there. Silver State over in that casino. In that casino. So, neat little brief stop. Now we're gonna continue on our way. We're gonna make a stop probably in Reno, see a couple things there, and then we'll be off the sack. Let's see, it's uh, 408. How many miles have we gone total? Total? Since we left St. Louis? 2,061 miles. We've got a truss bridge over there. That's pretty cool up here. But we're coming up. Oh, there's actually a second bridge up there, too. That's neat. But we're coming up to this kind of neat cutaway through the, through the rocks. Look at that. That looks cool. There's the other truss right there. That would actually be a cool picture of that bridge with the, the hills in the background. Yeah. Got some windy curves around this. This is beautiful. Look yeah, at this. this is really cool. I've not driven out here in a long time. I used to drive truck on out here. Yeah. Look at that. Bridges tunnel, maybe. We're going through a tunnel. We're going through a tunnel. Nice. It's so literally just right up the road. We've got a tunnel. Bicycles must exit. Apparently. Oh man, that was quite the. Don't try to get picked up here. Here we go. Got a picture. It's not a very long tunnel, but it's still kind of a cool looking one. Oh, that's a crop. Oh, look at that. Live stream dropped. Here we go through the tunnel. Not a very long one, but there's probably no cell repeater in it. And there we are through the tunnel. That was a cool tunnel, and that's a nice view over there. Very, very spiky rocks on the mountain there. That looks really cool. Let's see, we have gone 2,320. 5 miles and we're about 17 miles outside of Reno. Yeah, so we're, we're almost into Reno. We've got a little bit of light left. We're going to do a couple pictures and then continue on the, on the road. Continue west. Oh, there's the river. Down there. That's we, pretty we, We've been following this river for a while. Up there is the world's biggest little city. Yes, that it's is blurry, Reno. but that's Reno. That is Reno. We're going to attempt to go see the arch thing. That says the world's littlest or world's biggest, little biggest, city. biggest little city. Can't see a whole lot there. I don't think we're gonna do any elevators there, but there's Reno. Yeah. All right, everyone. It is 8:23, and we are here at California. So uh, across that line, everything gets like way more expensive. So we are now in California, and here's some of the scenery. So we have mountains and those very tall trees. It's pretty. Yeah, these are pretty. I love this street. It's my first time here, so we'll see if I love it or hate it. So far, I... Nevada County. <laughs> so, we just left Nevada, but now we're coming to Nevada County. It makes a lot of sense. That was a very small county then, if we were back there. Yeah, this is really pretty. So what do you think, Jason? Well, we kind of went from desert in Reno real quick to mountainous trees, which is kind of cool. So I guess while we still have daylight, we'll enjoy the scenery that we can before it gets too dark. We should have a little bit more daylight left, but we're losing it fast. This is pretty cool though. Same thing. 
this state for the first time. Yep. Um, so we have to go through this thing, which is kind of stupid. This is predictor agriculture. Yeah. They wave a lot of you. They're, 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 they're like I said, some, they, might, they might stop this car because they have a trailer. Well, this is kind of dumb. At least it's not a toll. No, it's not a toll. At least it's not a toll. Point. Okay, it is 8.54, and we are currently going up the mountain here. Stunner Pass, or near it. And pretty soon we'll probably be going over. We could have a good view. We'll be going downhill in a minute. So we just lost focus, but we are at Donner's Oh, Summit. look at this. Downgrades next 40 miles. Wow. So we just got, yeah, we're over the summit here and we're coming down. All of this. We're gonna be going down 7,000 feet in less than 100 miles. Wow. Steep grades and everything. I like that here, Steve. So that was cool. Alright, it's 9.50 and we have a big straightaway here. 29 miles outside of SAC. There is probably SAC up there. Part of it. Part of it very long stretch of road here but we are on the final stretch of the uh, the westward drive uh, we'll be going to san francisco so it's a little bit more west but we're 30 miles from the hotel we are almost there coming out of the mountains this we'll is be... probably about 10 of it right here yep all right it is 10 14 let's see our mileage for the trip so far 2470 and up in front of us is Sacramento. And we are only a couple miles away from our hotel. Less than two miles. Yeah, we are less than two miles from our Motel 6 that Jacob found for us. So we'll see if this place is any good or not. And tomorrow is going to be the Sacramento Elevator Filming Day. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned out there. And then Friday is going to be the San Francisco San Jose day and then Saturday is just gonna be a drive around and explore day. Well we have just arrived at our hotel and here's the Motel 6 exterior corridor. So we're just gonna check in and Andrew just killed the engine. Good job. We get ourselves checked in and get situated and relax. All right, everyone, it is 9.53 here on Thursday, and we are about ready to head out and go see somebody in downtown Sac today. Just waiting on Andrew, and we'll be heading down there. So over there is downtown Sac. There it is. There's old the old Sac area down there. I just got a text from somebody telling us fourth and turn right. almost to our destination. And then there should be a, he should be right over there. Right lane. Oh, there he is. Wonder who that is right there. All right. What hotel is this? Right C.J. Anderson. Oh my gosh. If you look up, there's a preheat light. What is this? Montgomery. C.J. Anderson. Can we all fit? Yep. Come on in. So. Squeeze in here.
see slow with your level than travel. Oh, I've seen ones like this. That's close. Three. Oh, is this four? Yeah. Is, is, was it three and now it's four? Yeah, something like that. This one is not sounding very good. Let's listen to it. Eight forty six. Where are we now? Not a nerd's house. <laughs> well, obviously. Well, I mean uh, that that sign says differently. <laughs> Anything that you want to show everyone that you just want to like, you proudly want to show off to this video. <laughs> it's just funny. I come in here and I'm thinking about Montgomery rid of my elevator. Stuff. Montgomery. We'll just like yeah. pan this person's stuff here. He's got a lot. Yeah. And a, a full escalator step. Like why? <laughs> So we got some cool stuff here. Yeah, and then we got the massive Sears elevator sign. Yep. What kind of ring that won't make a lot of noise? Well, none of them. Will this one ring? Yeah. Oh, okay. This one. Oh yeah, here we go. So yeah, there's that. So pretty cool. So uh, that was a fun day. What did you think of today downtown? I think it was it was a good day of filming. Yep. I got to tomorrow. Show you guys a lot. We had fun. And tomorrow we're going to San Francisco. Yes. Well, it is Friday, bright and early, and we're going down to San Francisco today, bright and early. Yeah. There's a nerd here, and I'm, there's an Andrew who's going to nap the whole way. All right, it is 8.50, and we are almost into San Jose. What are we about to see? Hopefully a San Jose elevator that's original. Yep, and then there's just him. Yeah, we're about we're uh, 1.6 miles from the building. So we are here at 715 North First Street. 715 North. And Andrew is going to ride his first. Is this your first San Jose? Yeah, it is. Hold on. Here we go. Yeah. This should be cool. Oh wow, it's still there. Normally I show diesel DC before a video, but I'm showing this because look at this. This is a San Jose elevator. Same exact panel. Send it to three, please. Yours is in better shape. Press it again. Hope it just didn't die.
First Mitsubishi in the U.S. favorite. Okay. Love these. XP is loading. <laughs> These are cool. Let's go up to six.
6.46, and uh, we have finished a great day of elevator. Well, not completely done yet, but we finished uh, most of our day filming elevators in San Francisco. And we're currently in San Francisco. Look at these hills, too. I know this video is not doing the justice of how steep this hill really is. Where we go down with, I think this is the curviest road in the world or in America. I'm not sure. Yeah, so we're going to be driving down Lombard Street here. Imagine living on this road. I would hate to because all the traffic. How do you feel that you've driven down Lombard That's Street? That's pretty cool. Now where to? So Andrew wants to drive down that. And it's really steep. The video probably doesn't show how steep it really is, but it's insane. And here we go down the ridiculous sharp crest ahead. Look at that view though. Is anyone behind me? Not at the moment, but there's just like tons of power lines in your way. But that's oh, a nice that's view so of Coit cool. Tower. Where's Coit Tower? Literally right in front of you. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. I can't even see it. Oh, dang. Oh. That felt weird. Oh, man, that was a little unsettling. Straight? Yeah. That was kind of freaky, actually. My brakes are right. Here we go again. This was not as sharp, though. Okay, we'll make a left next time you can. All right, it is 821. There is the Golden Gate Bridge. And guess what? We're driving across it, going out of San Francisco. There's the toll that they only collect in the southbound direction. Luckily, on the northbound, they don't. So guess what that means for us? First time going across it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, going northbound is free, but going into the city, you have to pay like nine bucks. So we're going up to a overlook right now to see if we can get a picture of the uh, of the bridge, maybe with the city in the background. It's foggy as usual, so I don't know how well it's going to come. Actually, it'll be kind of a distant uh, city off in the distance. That'll be cool. Which way do I go? Like, just go straight, and then you'll turn left. So we actually have to wait for this tunnel. This is a one-way tunnel. Mm -hmm. And when that turns green, we get to go through. Well, we just got the green light, so let's go through this tunnel. That was pretty cool. It's almost a mile long. What'd you think of that tunnel? Now we're in the mountains. Yeah, we don't freeze or get blown off the bridge. We're gonna get blown off the, the overlook. So there is the Golden Gate Bridge, and now we're gonna drive back to Sacramento. Take this nerd home. Yeah. All right, it is 12.51, and this is Saturday. We're just doing a chill drive around day today. We're currently going up into the mountains to see Lake Berryessa. And then we might end up on the uh, back in San Francisco, actually. You're gonna get, maybe get some seafood or something later tonight. But we're just mainly exploring, seeing what the terrain and the, uh, the scenery looks like. Take some pictures and just, just relax today. This is our only non-elevator day, probably. All right, so we're up here in the mountains now. And we are almost to Lake Berryessa. You should be able to see the 
dam up here pretty soon. We're only two miles from it. Yep. These mountains are very grassy. If, if these mountains were to get on caught on fire, this whole mountain would burn up. Because look how dry it is. There we go. We're gonna be crossing the uh, bridge. And there's the lake over. There's the dam over there for Lake Berryessa. Can we see the dam where we stop? Uh, we'll be up right next to it. Rock slide area. But there's the dam there, and there should be a pull off area up here you can pull over and look. Yep, and this is where we will get our pictures. So, yeah, there is the lake, and right there is that giant hole uh, where the water overflows when it gets really high. It's really low right now. There's a, there's a photo if you want to see how low it is. But now we're just going to drive up through the mountains and work our way out towards the coast. And there's the lake over there. They have the whole thing fenced in, don't they? Pretty much, yeah. So we're driving up here in the mountains of California. And uh, there's some uh, wineries and stuff up here. There's also a lot of burnt areas from the recent fires. All the trees you see over there are all charred. They're all black from the fire. I think it was pretty recent too when this all kind of started burning up. Yeah, here's another, here's some more burnt area up here. It looks like. Yeah, look, look at this area here. I think this was all burned up. See how the trees are all charred and black. That's, that's what's going on with this road. All right, it is 519 and we are here at Stinson Beach and we're going down to the ocean to take some pictures. And this will be my real first time being over here on the Pacific Ocean. All right, so we're now going to get back on the road and uh, I'm gonna leave this guy with the uh, B-roll. So it is now the next day. Last night, after uh, we got into San Francisco, we had some seafood, at least I did. And then we, we literally just came back to the hotel and chilled out, we were pretty tired. But it is now the next day, it is now Sunday. We are, we are heading out of Sacramento on our journey back towards St. Louis, back to Virginia. There is something on fire over there, wouldn't surprise me. It is California, so I feel like this probably oh, house fire. So it has really big whatever is burning over on there. I-5 South. But anyway, we are heading out of Sacramento. We're gonna have one more stop along the way. We're gonna go to Macy's and we're gonna check out a really special elevator. So next we're gonna see the elevator.
what did you think of that elevator we just saw? That was pretty cool, but the passengers had better motors. Yep. We're now currently heading out of Sacramento. We're heading towards, like I said before, Vegas. Use the right it might be a bus, it might be cool. Who knows what'll happen down there. We're just gonna try to get a couple of elevators. And then our hotel is probably gonna be in Phoenix. I think that's what we're gonna do. We don't actually have one booked yet. We probably should do that. Soon. We'll wait till we see how far we make. Yeah. But this is Keep right pretty the much going to be just a kind of book it back towards St. Louis. We want to get down to Texas as soon as we can. We got a lot of elevator junk to pick up and attempt to get Continue back to St. Louis. Miles. And we also have some rather large items we will be picking up. So at this point now, the filming is mainly done. We've done a lot of our content gathering. We are going to try to get some videos in Arizona and New Mexico. I'd like to have one from each state. Oh, that's not a problem. And at that point, yeah, it's not really so much filming, but more of getting the elevator museum stuff and just getting back to St. Louis, and then he's gonna head back to Roanoke. And that's gonna conclude our California trip. But we still have a week, though. It's not like it's like the end of the trip. This is like probably halfway through at this point. So you guys still got a lot more content to see here. So, enjoy. <laughs> and we are 3,537.4 miles we have driven since St. Louis and we are coming into a small town Hello, here California. in California. We're going to Peggy Sue's 50's Diner which uh, apparently you've been to before, right? Yep, this will be my third time. So that's going to be exciting. Well, here it is, Peggy Sue's 50's Diner. Time for dinner. So that was our dinner. What'd you think of yours? It was good. It was very tasty. And now we're getting back on the road to Vegas. Mm -hmm. Let's see, so it's 8-11 and up ahead there. I can turn the camera and you can see. That is a 10 mile backup. Also, if you look up ahead, you can see that is the world's tallest thermometer. And at this point, probably one of the world's longest backups. <laughs> it goes up to the top of the hill. Oh, no, it's like 10 miles long. So we're going to judge how long this backup is here in just a moment. There's a 188.6. That is six miles of traffic, and we still can't see the end. But this was about a 10 mile backup. That's about the longest backup I've ever seen in my life. That was insane. How far are we from Vegas now? We're probably about like... Let's see, here's a signpost right here. Vegas is... It's 81 miles, Salt Lake City 502. It's still 81 miles to Vegas. It is 8.57 and we have gone how many miles? 3,643. 
and we are about to get into Nevada. Nevada. We got two casinos. That's literally the first thing you see are casinos. Whiskey Peach. And there it is. As soon as you cross the state line, gambling. Look at that little monorail thing. That's cool. Yep, as soon as you cross the state line, instant gambling. That is very, uh, well, this state, so. We're about, I'm not sure how far we are from Vegas, but once we get there, we're gonna check out those elevators. Yep. Well, it's 9.13 and there are the lights of Vegas off in the distance. Hopefully we can ride some of the elevators that are down there. Okay, up there is Vegas. There is the Luxor up there. That's where we're going. It's got a big beam of light coming out the top. Turn right. I hope I'm in the right lane. There it is. Here is what Las Vegas looks like. Is that supposed to be like the, is that supposed to be like New York right there? Yeah, that's a mini model of New York. Well, it kind of sucks. I mean, I've never been to New York City, so I, I wouldn't know, but. Yep, there's the roller coaster up there. Yeah, there's a roller coaster. We got this big thing. Look, there's a glass elevator right there. Turn right on. Cool looking shaft. Got some outdoor escalators. If these are the walkways I was talking about when yeah, we filmed. Yeah, we need to film a couple of these because there's like a bunch of elevators these here. These pedestrian walkways have a bunch of elevators. So we're gonna explore Vegas here for a little bit and see what we can find. We're here in Vegas and we're gonna ride some of the elevators here. Here's one of the pedestrian elevators. Jet Plus. Air condition, set number one. It's got a Tissing Crop mod. Tissing Crop mod. Here we go down. says 18 hours we're not actually going to be driving that entire distance today we're just going to drive until we find something and stay a night and then we'll be in san antonio tomorrow the plan here is on wednesday to go to automatic elevator and clear out the diesel lucy shelf drive up to dallas and then on thursday we're getting another elevator item and we'll be driving 
driving back to St. Louis on Thursday night. So enjoy this ride to the desert. There's probably not gonna be a whole lot to see, but we are gonna go by the Hoover Dam, which is gonna be cool. Okay, it is 4.41 and we just arrived in Phoenix at this Desert Sky Mall because we're gonna film the elevator in Dillard's. We're at the Desert Sky Mall. What'd you think of what we saw in there? Pretty cool old Montgomery. The old Montgomery, we got really lucky because I of know that. Justin would foam over it. Mm -hmm. We got lucky because the second floor of the store is actually closed off. It's only the first floor, but the bathrooms are up on the second floor. So what they've done is the elevator goes up and you walk like through this like temporary wall to yeah. get over to the bathroom. So if it wasn't for those bathrooms up there, that thing would have been closed. Yeah. So we got really lucky on that. That was cool. But now, it's food time, and we're along Interstate 10, so guess what that means? Whataburger. So we're gonna go to the Whataburger, which is just right actually over here by this mall. We'll get our first Whataburger of the trip. So we got In-N-Out and Whataburger. So we've had both of them. Yep. So it is now 522, and this road really sucks, whoa. And we are here in, we just got done with Whataburger. And we're currently navigating towards San Antonio. We haven't chosen a hotel yet. We need to do that soon. But we'll, uh, we'll get a few views of Phoenix as we go through. It is 105 degrees out here. <coughs> it is hot. 4,019 miles so far. This is, this is a crazy, crazy amount of miles. And up here we should get a good view of the city. Never been to Phoenix before. Definitely would like to come back and explore someday, but for now we're just passing through. And what, what would we say? We're going to El, where are we going? El Paso? So yeah. That's about, probably about where we're gonna get a hotel. Yeah. That'll get us right at the edge of Texas so that we can head down to San Antonio tomorrow. Up there, there is downtown. Right behind downtown is a 737. Arizona Centennial. Well, we've been in Arizona, but there's an Arizona sign. It's pretty much all of Phoenix you're going to see here. Yep. This is cool. Oh, is this one of those? Are these one of those exits that is in a tunnel? I think so. Tunnel, though. Notice how 
notice how the ones on the right are like LED and all these are still yeah. sodium? They're slowly replacing the sodiums. Back there, there goes, looks like an A3 something. I couldn't really tell what it is. There it goes. So yeah, it looks like there's some pretty good traffic here in Phoenix, but that's really all we're gonna get to see. And uh, see what we find down the road. 7.05 and we've gone 4,135 miles. And up in the head, you can see Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. It's not a whole lot to see, but uh, it's starting to get dark here soon. We've got four hours and 22 minutes left to our hotel, which is in um, El Paso, El Texas, Paso. on La Quinta. Yep. There's Tucson. It is now 7.48, and we are rolling along on Interstate 10. See, it's getting dark now. The sun has set. And we are 269 miles away from our hotel. And we just made a quick stop for snacks and to pee. Mm -hmm. And it's just been a very deserted drive, if you get what I mean. This has been the scenery for the past most of, actually pretty much most of the day. It's been like this. But how's the, how's the, how's the drive been today for you so far? A lot easier. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty nice. All right, it is now 12.15 and we are 12 miles from our hotel, and we are about ready to enter Texas. You see there we have FM 1905, that is a Texas thing. And we got a sign here that says something about New Mexico. You are now leaving New Mexico. Come to Texas. And we are now in Texas. Oh, Star State. Yep. Texas sign. Down there there is. Uh, I see it way down there. Yeah, and there it is. Welcome to Texas. Here we are back in Texas though, this time on the very, very far west side of Texas. There it is, the Texas sign. So we're getting off at our exit and straight ahead, you can't see it anymore, but all those lights went off the distance are lights of Mexico. But our hotel, I see it over there. It's right over there. Convenient off the interstate as well. Well, this is kind of interesting. There are two of the same hotels right next to each other. There's that one. And ours is this one over here. So here's our hotel, and as you can see, it's an exterior corridor hotel. You've arrived. Which may or may not have an elevator. For th with three floors, it might. I think I see, is that it right over there? Where? I don't know. We'll have to explore and see if there's one, two, could be two elevators, or none. Who knows? I don't see anything that looks like an elevator. There's a lot of steps between it all though, but we're gonna get ourselves checked in here and get into our room. We'll show you the room before we uh, trash it up too much. So we just arrived here at our hotel and we actually got here at a decent hour tonight. And I'm definitely awake enough to give a quick little hotel tour here. I'm not gonna do anything too in depth. I think Andrew's gonna do one of those. So first over here we have the climate control. And seat set on 64. There's outside. Here's just a very quick view outside. There's a wild Andrew. But inside here we have our TV. There's the drawers. The two beds. The phone and the clock. Some lights. 
get a fridge and a microwave with outlets on the front. That's that's kind of interesting. You know, a couple cups, standard, you know, just kind of ice, ice bucket. Here's the closet. Which has a door that I am really failing at opening. Not sure why I can't get the door open, but I think it's I think it's just yeah, there it is. It's kind of stuck in there. And just closet, nothing too exciting here. Very nice large table area over here. And here's the bathroom. The coffee machine's over here. We got this kind of almost panoramic mirror. Here's the toilet and the shower. So this is actually a really, really awesome room for the price. It was only like $35 for this thing. This was definitely a cheap one. What do you think of this hotel room? Uh, for what it is, it's not bad. This is actually a really neat room. With that being said, we're gonna head to bed and uh, we'll probably not head to bed right away, but we'll be heading off for the night here and uh, tomorrow we will be driving to San Antonio. So. Here. Bye. He's not gonna say bye, he's rude. Oh, sorry. All right, it is now 10 o'clock on June 1st. It's now June. And we're gonna be heading out towards San Antonio. Oh, that is very bright. There is outside on the hotel, of our hotel. So we're gonna head out and head on the road here. We're not gonna make a lot of stops. We're actually gonna try to catch one elevator on the way out of town, but other than that, we're not gonna really look around because we wanna get down to San Antonio because tomorrow we got stuff planned and we got a van that we have to pick up to get stuff home. We're in El Paso and straight ahead there is what I believe is Mexico. Uh, first time seeing that. Yeah, I can see the wall, I can see the border. Uh, is that the border fence over there? I'm not sure if they have a fence. I think they do, I don't. But yeah, I believe that is Mexico, so you guys get to see another country on this video. Look how much different it looks, too. There it is, zoomed in on Mexico. Yeah, that's cool. There it is. Oh yeah, you can see the fence down there. And there it goes. That's, oh yeah, there's the fence. Yep, there's the border fence. It's open right now. You can walk in, there's a border patrol person right there. Yeah. You can walk into Mexico. Yeah, well. So we just made a uh, quick stop for gas. But here we are getting on to the interstate. Now that Andrew has peed, we are back on the road. It's two, currently 2.19, and we have four hours and 52 minutes until we get to San Antonio. Oh, almost 5,000 miles. All right, it is 6.30, and we are here in San Antonio. We're getting into it. We are almost 5,000 miles into the trip. We have four more miles to go. This is from St. Louis. And this is just from St. Louis. We are on the outskirts here of San Antonio. here in San Antonio now. Anyway, we're going to uh, just chill out for the night, head to bed, and uh, then tomorrow we're gonna get some elevator parts. So today, today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday. We're stuck on the interstate, getting on Interstate 410. Andrew, what did we get today? <clears throat> what do you mean? We got a bunch of elevator stuff. I don't even know what it is. Just piles of elevator stuff. And we gotta go get this van so that we can get some other stuff. It is currently 525. We are 5,031 miles into the trip. We've just rented a van because we are going to be driving this elevator stuff back to St. Louis. So that means I have to drive a car and so does Andrew. So you guys have seen this Texas trip a couple times. So won't be seeing a whole lot more on the way home, but I'll keep you guys updated with how things go. Making a stop in Austin to see Nick. Gonna get some dinner. 
and then head on for a night in Fort Worth where we're picking up another item tomorrow and then we'll be on the road to St. Louis. It is 7.05 and we had to make a quick stop to Bucky's in New Braunfels, but after getting some drinks and some snacks, it is time to get going back on the road to Austin. All right, it is now 10.23 and we have gone 5,213 miles in this trip. And we are just here in Waco, Texas. We just stopped for getting gas. Andrew is currently over there filling up our van for the elevator stuff. And we are not too terribly far out of Fort Worth at this point. The drive has been not too bad. That storm we went through, uh, we went through a pretty bad storm out of Austin. And it wasn't, it looked terrible. There's just a lot of lightning. I think it's most of it's past. It's pretty dry here. So it wasn't, wasn't too bad of a storm to go through. We're rolling along just nicely here on Interstate 35 and uh, we'll be sleeping here soon because we are pretty tired. So this has been a really great trip so far and very productive as well, lots of content and we have tons and tons of elevator stuff. Here's just a few, we got this, uh, this button from Nick gave me this. This is just a random, just like a random PI actually. This thing here. Yeah, you got a fire service, got a PI up there, just kind of cool. So, you know, some neat stuff to work with, to play with, to, to make working. But anyway, we're gonna get back on the road here and I will see you when we get to Fort Worth. All right, it is 12.03 and we just arrived at our hotel. There's Andrew the van, it is the Quality Inn. So we will do a little check out of this hotel here in just a second. So this here is our hotel room and it's actually very nice. So let's have a look around here. You can tell, uh, here's the, what the property looks like. We have a Dover Impulse elevator there. There's only one elevator. And what do you think of the hotel, just by looking at it? Oh, uh, I'm gonna chair and park here in a few minutes. Yeah, he's gonna do the official hotel tour, just taking a look around. We got the microwave. Here's the table. Actually got some power outlets there. Over here is the bathroom. We got this kind of interesting looking, uh, very square sink. There's the coffee maker. Here is the bathroom. So this is the last hotel of the trip, which I think we're both kind of happy about. <laughs> it's a neat hotel here in Fort Worth. And we'll uh, pretty much just hang out here with us tonight. We're gonna do, he is going to be doing the official hotel tour uh -huh. here in just a moment. So with that being said, that is pretty much it for tonight. All right, it's the next day here in Fort Worth. There's a wild Andrew. And uh, what are we getting today? We're getting a, a big selector, which we'll see here in a little bit. All right, what's but we're getting on the road, uh, so it won't be a whole lot. We're just driving right back to St. Louis and we'll be back at Jacobs tonight. All right, it's just about 12 o'clock and we are 5,365 miles in the trip. We just stopped here at this building in Dallas because we're probably gonna be getting some elevator parts out of this. But anyway, it's time to get on the road. The GPS to Jacob's house says we have 667 miles, 10 hours and 18 minutes. Again, since I'm going to be driving, I won't be doing any filming. We've also seen this drive in the past. So, time to get on the road and this is gonna be a long, boring drive. All right, it is 10.33 and we just arrived back in St. Louis after a long day of driving. These are the stats for the entire trip. We drove 6,042.7 miles from here in St. Louis back to here with a total trip time with 108 hours and 16 minutes. That's at 08 because it rolled over from 99. So there's some trip stats. So over here we have Andrew. How was your drive? It was decent. We are here back in St. Louis and just to show what we got, because I don't think I've shown it yet, that is the couple of the things we picked up uh, and why we needed this van. That is going to conclude this trip, our big California road trip. What did you think of it? It was epic. It was epic. And we're gonna end by, well, we were gonna look at that plane, but it's, it's gone. So hope you enjoyed this video and that is going to be it.